Hello. Welcome to our new section, Basic Data Transformation. In this section, we will learn how to make the data sources adequate to meet our model design requirements. Also, we will see how to deal with unstructured tables, such as cross tables, and incorporate them into our data model. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with cleansing a dirty table. In this video, we will work with the transformation step wizard. We will also look at other transformation tricks. The developer commonly faces the challenge of adapting a user file such as Excel, CSV, text that has either a non-standard structure or contains dirty data which needs to be removed, such as report headers or subtotal lines, and sometimes both. Fortunately for us, ClickView's data extraction engine is powerful enough to be able to interpret these tables, cleanse them before loading, and convert them into a standard table. However, for that to happen, we must specify the set of rules to follow when loading a certain file. These rules and conditions can be set via the transformation wizard, available when loading local table files and HTML web files. Now, to demonstrate how the transformation wizard works, we will be using a text file that has been provided along with this course, named Production Planning Legacy.txt. Look for it inside the Side Examples folder within Airline Operations. Here's how the contents of the Production Planning Legacy.txt file looks in a text editor. Now we will load this file into a new QVW file, so let's begin by creating a new ClickView document and saving it in the Samples Example folder as productionplanning.qvw. After saving the file, make sure the production planning legacy.txt file is also at the same location. Next, open the script editor by pressing Ctrl E and bring up the file wizard by clicking on the table files button. Then browse to the folder in which the text file is stored. Select it and click on open. Right after that, the file wizard will show this window. Make sure the parameters are set as we have it here so that ClickView interprets the file correctly. After clicking Next, the File Wizard Transform window will appear, showing a brief description about it and a warning. Essentially, the warning text indicates that the Transformation Step Wizard should not be used for large tables. In our case, the example file contains no more than 50 lines of data so it won't be a problem for us this time, and will rarely be when working with actual dirty reports. Click on the Enable Transformation Step button to access the corresponding features. And now you will be presented with this wizard. As you can see, the Transformation Step wizard is split into several tabs, and each one is used to handle different scenarios. We will be using three of the five tabs, but we'll describe what all of them do and the types they could be used. Our example file certainly has some garbage that needs to be thrown out. We will use the first tab of the transformation step wizard to remove the heading rows, that is the first four lines. Also, we will remove the visual separator between the column headings and the actual data and the weekly totals. Now, to accomplish these, we need to follow the next few steps. First of all, click on each of the row numbers in the first four lines, as well as the sixth line, one at a time. The entire row should be highlighted and the Delete Marked button should be enabled. Click on the Delete Marked button to remove these rows. They should instantly disappear. Now, click on the Conditional Delete button to continue removing the weekly totals. A new window will appear, in which we will specify the condition on which the remaining rows should be removed. Make sure to set the parameters here. The Compare with Value Radio button should be selected and the comparison operator will be set to Contains. Also, the comparison value will be the word Total and the Case Sensitive and Not options should be disabled. Now, click on the Add button to finish setting the condition and then click on OK to return to the previous window. So, this procedure removes the garbage from our file, but that is not all we need to do. There is another formatting challenge we will tackle with this file, which is that data is split into two parts. The first five weeks are on the left side of the file, and weeks 6 to 10 are on the right, occupying the same rows. 
So, we need to unwrap them. Essentially, we want to move the data located on the right part of the table and place it below the data located on the left. To do that, we will activate the Unwrap tab from the Transformation Step Wizard and follow the next steps. So, use the bar-shaped cursor to mark the beginning of the right part of the table by clicking on the column border between columns 4 and 5. This will specify the separation, as you can see here. If you don't see where the second part of the table begins, use the scroll bar to move to the right. Now, click Unwrap to move the table contents to the appropriate place. We should now see the result. This procedure leaves us with a new garbage line, the column headings corresponding to the unwrapped content, shown at line 27. To remove it, we need to go back to the Garbage tab. Here, click on the Conditional Delete button to specify the condition on which the rows should be removed. From the Specify Row Condition dialog window, we will specify two conditions, joined with an AND operator. For the first condition, mark the parameters. The Compare with Value radio button should be selected and the comparison operator will be set to Contains. Also, the comparison value will be the word Date and the Case Sensitive and Not options should be disabled. After this, click on the Add button to include the first condition and then continue setting the second condition. Select the Range radio button. Click on the From button and set the cell index position to 2 from top. Then click on OK. Now click on the 2 button and set the cell index position to 1 from bottom. Click on OK. Then click on the Select button and set the Select value to 1 and the Skip value to 0. Click on OK. Now click on the Add button to include this second condition and then click on OK. Now the two conditions will be evaluated and those rows that match both conditions will be removed. We had to apply both conditions because if we had only specified the contains date condition, the first row would have been removed as well. Furthermore, if we had deleted line 27 directly by marking it with the mouse and by clicking on the delete marked button, even though the effect would have been what we expected, the final code instruction would always look for line 27 and remove it without first evaluating if that's actually a garbage line. What would happen when the report is updated? Who knows if the garbage line will still be line 27? You can't be sure. It's better to apply a certain logic so that even when you update the report, the code can automatically identify the garbage line. As we previously said, there are records with no specified date. We will use the Transformation Step Wizard dialog to fill those values. For this, let's first activate the Fill tab from the Transformation Step Wizard dialog. Next, click on the Fill button. This wizard should appear on your screen. The Target column field should be 1, as that is where the date values are stored. The Fill type will be Above, to take the value that is in the immediate previous record. Now, click on the Cell Condition button to specify which rows should be filled. In the Cell Condition window, Make sure the cell value field is set to is empty and the not and case sensitive options are disabled. Click on OK twice to return to the transformation step window. As you can see, the missing cells now have the correct date value. Click on the next button to exit the transformation wizard. From the file wizard, option dialog window, set the label parameter to embedded labels and then click on finish to generate the final load statement. After specifying the transformation criteria, the corresponding load statement is automatically generated and, as you will see, all of the settings are specified in the script itself. And here's how the generated script should look. Let's save the changes and reload the script. After reloading the script, we can open the table viewer window and see that we have a nicely formatted table with the production planning data. So, here's the formatted table with the production planning data. Let me rearrange these tables so we could get a better view. Cool! As the code was generated and pasted into the script editor, every time the text report is updated, we just need to rerun the script to update the data in the ClickView document, without having to go through of all of the steps over again. 
We've successfully loaded a dirty file into ClickView by taking advantage of one of its extraction capabilities. This capability broadens ClickView's ability to consolidate data from disparate sources and empowers the ClickView developer in the data model design process. Let's look at some other options the Transformation Step Wizard provides. Let's navigate to the Transformation Wizard. Here we have the Column tab, which allows us to copy data from one column, either in its entirety or based on conditions, and place it into other columns. We can also create new columns based on this copy. Next is the Rotate tab. This tab can be used to rotate an entire table to either side or by transposing it. We've uncovered one of the transformation tools available in ClickView, and now it's time to learn about other functions we can use when extracting data.